Okay, because we are a bit more specific today, I want you to see Jesus taking you to the council room. Now remember, a room isn't something with four walls. A room is a realm of a dimension. So expand your imagination, your thinking. When you walk into a room, you are walking into a realm of the council. As you walk into that realm of the council, I'm just going to explain to you what I saw. You can take it wherever you want. I want you to see a massive sapphire table. On that table, you see frequencies, colors running to and fro from that. It's an extension of the throne of God. Around this table, not chairs, but thrones that are situated. Thrones are meant for the sons of God to sit with a council to engage with them. So take a moment and just ponder on what you see. Consider the heavenly beings that are in there. Consider the council members that are in there, the other sons of God that are in there. Just take a minute or two and just experience what is going on in that realm of the council. And if you'd like to share what you're seeing, you are welcome to share with us. Right, I want you to picture towards the, if you want to call it a corner, of the, of the room, the realm of the council, you've got an angel standing there. It is a magnificent angel. If your imagination stretches far as to what an angelic being looks like, times it by a million. He's standing there and he's got what would appear like a scroll in front of him. It is as if he's the guardian of the scroll of yod heh vav -He. Remember in the beginning when I explained to you that scroll does not look like any normal scroll that we can think of. The scroll is alive. The Hebrew letters are alive. The mechanics of that scroll oozes dimensions and realms that is just beyond imagination. Now in that corner is this is the angel of the scroll of Yahweh with this in front of him. Now you got Jesus with you. And I want you to take a moment and ask Yeshua for the scroll that has been released over the household, over you, that you would receive your scroll from the scroll of Yahweh. Experience that process and with Jesus with you, you open that scroll and you ask him to show you what is new on this scroll. Now, 
just to say for some of you, you might get downloads of note. For some of you, you might see one thing and it might be small. It's never insignificant. Whatever it is that Jesus shows you is what he wants to show you now. All right. So let's take two or three minutes, experience that process and engage with the scroll that Jesus is giving you. If you want to write down what Jesus is showing you, you're more than welcome. Whatever is going to make it flow for you. There's no formula here. And I'd like to, if you can, or would like to, just to share maybe something that you see God is showing you out of the scroll, or maybe something that can be pertinent to everybody in the group but the idea is is that your scroll gets activated tonight If I can say something. Um, when I ask Jesus um, to reveal something new on my scroll, um, he gave me the um, number eight. And I immediately realized what he's showing me because um, I felt that I'm moving in a way of restoring creation. I felt that was, but I, I, I needed some confirmation. And I waited a very long time for it to come into wisdom and maturity to be mm. responsible. Yeah. And so he never gives me scripture to confirm something. But so he gave me Romans 8.19. That's yeah. what I received. Okay, fantastic. You know the, you know the Hebrew letter Chet? Is the eighth Hebrew letter. Yeah, yeah. I will go look into it. Yeah, and that's obviously the first letter, which is Chokma, which is wisdom. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's very, very significant.
If you have the confidence to share, it will be great. It helps the others on the group with what they're seeing, etc. as well. For sure. Um, when I, I, Jesus took me over to this massive scroll and he helped me reach into the liquid substance of a scroll. And it's like taking something out of eternity. And it wasn't a scroll like I imagined a wooden scroll, but it was a book, a big book. And it was the back side of the book. And as he flipped from the back to the front, it was streams of light that shone out. Again, there was depth in it. There wasn't just a upper flock. <laughs> it's, it's absolute depth. There was a shining like an unknown for now. But as the book closed, the outside of the book where you can see the pages was red. The, and then in between was Hebrew letters and eyes from one side to the other. And yeah, that's where I'm standing now, just holding that book with eyes in it. <laughs> awesome. Well, what's significant if you think about the Hebrew for scroll, um, the first Hebrew letter, Samech, and Samech has to do with realms and the wheels within wheels. And the wheels within wheels, like we know from Revelations, have eyes all around it. So that's significant what you're seeing. Uh, I also want to, uh, just to add that the scroll I saw was also a, a pulsating book. It wasn't a scroll. It was a book pulsating with light and by uh, frequencies. Yes. If you consider... Um, Sorry. Uh, sorry, we... Joel. Um, I just want to uh, share something that I've seen. Uh, I must just go and um, look up the, the meaning of the Hebrew letters. But um, on the scroll, um, it, it looked like it was a, a, like a golden shimmering color. And then um, I think the second letter is Beth, if I'm, if I'm correct. And then um, I also saw Nun. And then the, uh, the number, number 17, uh, which is the Hebrew letter Pei, if I'm correct. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I'll just go and have it look, looked up. Um, I'm not 100% on the meanings yet, but I'll just go and have a, a look into that as well. Okay, well, as we know, Beth always speaks of temple. <clears throat> God created through Beth creation, and um, and you are the temple. So obviously, for us as co-creators, God wants to create through us. And then um, Pei is one of the, the three Hebrew letters in scroll, which is, speaks of mouth and um, awakening. It's definitely one of them as well. It would be interesting to note that a couple of prophecies have been released with awakening in it. But it seems like what they are missing is that they are waiting for God to do something. And this awakening is different. It is God waiting for the sons to do something. And God is stirring the sons of God that's why the scrolls have been dispersed. And that's why the storehouses have been, have been allocated. Is that when the sons of God learn to engage their scroll in that storehouse, you are going to start co-creating with Christ like you've never experienced before. Then we start to operate on quantum level. So, yeah. Um, Charles, I, was, I saw um, when my scroll opened, it was... Um, uh, father showed me his heart so i just saw this blood red heart but it was um so it was his heart for me uh, and for us as his sons and um he showed me having intimate conversations um with him will reveal this heavenly mm. the secrets of heaven 
this new um, heavenly language that nice. he um, that he just revealed to me. And then what was really uh, quite a revelation for me because I listened to the prophecy over the week on Sunday already and spent really spent time in his presence. And um, so I got the word uh, G-A-D, but, but you said Chadma is wisdom. Mm. And um, the last time I just went into the throne room, God said that he wants me to engage with the spirit of wisdom. So that just sort of linked up with me, with that for me. So that was quite a revelation. Absolutely. And, and, and engaging with wisdom means God is also creating something new um, on your scroll and what he's releasing. So when you engage with wisdom, it's a very, very exciting time. And that is engaging with original intent because wisdom was first with God before anything else. And um, oh, that's, that's wonderful. And that's awesome. I saw um, on my scroll. Um, am I here? Yeah, I'm listening. Okay. Um, something similar to, I think... Um, what Marcel saw, um, it um, was like a window that into another realm um, made out of light um, with um, crystals which are made out of light as a substance um, and rainbows um, it, with the seven spirits. Um, of God um, and in Revelation um, that's also uh, referred to as the seven eyes of God um, the seven spirits um, just uh, a connection to the eyes in the book um, yeah. Yeah, so basically mm -hmm. I think a realm of um, intimacy yes Absolutely. Well, that, that's, that's very significant if you think about that prophecy that, um, that with this awakening and with the scrolls, that one of the significant things about the sons of God in the council is that their highest priority is intimacy with Yahweh. So, absolutely. Because that's the only way you're going to access that chamber. Remember we spoke about that chamber that is set apart for you, that no one else can see or access. And no one will know about it unless you engage it and speak it out. Thank you, Jens. Can you hear me? I can. Oh, sorry, man. Um, so what jumped out to me was, um, I don't know if it was the hit or the hate, because they look so similar. Um, so one is five and one is eight. So I'm not sure what that means, but that's sort of, I sort of got a picture like, you know, like Stonehenge. <laughs> not supposed to be thinking of that, but Stonehenge mm -hmm. popped out and that type of thing with a um, column at the top and column down each side, you know, jumped out. Okay. So I don't know what this is all about. Okay. Well, let's, let's just wait. Let's see what, what Jesus shows you. A is obviously breath of God. Chet is wisdom. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, that's right. Both represent gateways. Well, every Hebrew letter is a gateway. I tell you, every time I engage the gate, the, the Hebrew letters, I get drunk and drunk and drunk. Very religious. <laughs> okay, I want to take you guys further from here. So now that you've got your scroll, if you haven't seen what is in the scroll or you couldn't sense yet what, what Jesus is showing you, it's, it's not the end of the world. This is the relationship you take forward with you um, it's a journey. It's not, it's all going to roll out like a slot machine for you. I want you to take that scroll that Jesus has given you. 
And I want you to just, I want you to push it into your spirit. You need to take that thing, this is a prophetic action, and you need to just push it into your spirit. As you push it into your spirit, it must be like a volcano that just erupts in your spirit, that you just see uh, light, colors, frequency, Hebrew letters, everything must just blow out from and in through your spirit because a transformation is busy happening. So uh, it's, it's so important this because something is being birthed in your spirit right now by pushing in that, um, that scroll. So take a minute or two and just go through that process of what you experience there. And, you know, you're on mute. So if you want to speak to Jesus, go ahead. You know, there's no formula we are. I'll, I just want you to have the engagement and the experience. Of course, if you go rock and roll that side, just make sure you are on mute, you know. I just sense Jesus is saying that <clears throat> open your ears as well. Because with the scroll that is being released in your spirit, there's a new sound being released as well. So in other words, when you speak, there is a frequency. Remember, there's a song written in your DNA. And that song is unique to your DNA. Through this scroll there is a release coming from your DNA of the song that is written in you, which means it's a frequency that's being released and it's going to change the way you speak in tongues as well. So there's going to be a visible manifest, a physical manifestation of what is busy happening spiritually in you. course, if you want to share something, you're more than welcome to do it. Microphone is mute. Can you hear me? Shal? Okay. I just want to say I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything what was on the scroll. But when you said push it into your spirit. It looked like fireworks, you know? All yeah. colors of fireworks shooting out of my innermost being in all colors in like a massive fountain. That's what I saw. Sure. When, when I pushed my scroll in my spirit, um, I just saw... You know, we all know that coal compressed becomes a diamond. And as I pressed that into my spirit, it was just this overflow of diamonds um, coming out of me and flowing. And um, it is just like, it is as if Jesus is saying it's, it's the now time. Things are mature now to be released. 
or the next phase, the next chapter. And, and on all these diamonds, and, and, I, and I see I look like the diamond, so I not, might not be shaped in that, in that triangle, but I'm glittering with this new that's being released in my spirit. And, um, and my spirit body is changing. It's not the same as it was before because the, the, the color, the frequency, and everything that my spirit body used to emanate is different with the new scroll, which was quite fascinating for me. So I'll, I'll still give a minute or two if someone wants to share their experience, and we're going to move over to the storehouse. Charles, I'm going to explain what happened to me from Sunday and what I've picked up again today. So I am going to include the storehouse a little earlier than you're engaging, but I'm just going to share it anyway. So on Sunday when you were talking, I was standing at that sapphire table and I felt a shadow come over me and I looked up and there was this massive mountain that had come and was hovering over me. And I knew that this was my storehouse. And there was a ring of fire around the edge of the, the mountain. And as I looked inside, it was this incredible fiery ice. It was all the different colors. It was the intensity of white. It was almost like you're explaining now a diamond that had this intense light shining through it and refracting through the whole mountain. And that's kind of where I left off on Sunday. Now, I've just picked up in the same place where I actually realized that not only is this the storehouse, but actually God was really starting to show me what my treasury room in my mountain looked like. And it's never really looked that great before, to be honest. I'm a little bit fast. So this time, it's really good to see and hear what I am. And when I first went and engaged in it, it kind of felt like, not that I know what this feels like, but what they're starting to call the DUMBs now, D-U-M-Bs, Deep Underground Military Base. And it almost felt like a casino military base. So you can imagine there was this noise, there was this energy, there was this, yeah, I know, don't. And then I had all around on the sides were like holographic screens. And God said to me, I want you to read your scroll from these screens. And I could like literally scroll with my finger across these screens and see like videos being played out with stuff that is on the scroll and each one had a smell and a sound and it was so real so real um so yeah our scrolls can look like a whole lot of things but what I am trying to say is that the treasury and storerooms are very real and they are about to be released. And I'm hearing the sound of money falling. Yeah, I'm sure many like that sound. Thanks, Kerry. I think I'll jump in and share before we go to the storerooms. Um, I saw, as you were describing the table, I saw the table had no end on either side. It just went on and on and on. And it was, um, it was a place that Jesus was taking me to because I had a seat at that table, as we all do. And he was seating me, and I was excited. It was the first time I had been invited to sit at that table where the human council and the divine council together would meet mm -hmm. for whatever. <laughs> and we all have a seat there. 
it just became very evident to me that we all have a seat there, that this table is huge, and that um, Jesus seats his the sons around the table, and he told me that the word, I just got one new word on my scroll, and it was the word rest, and he just said to... Um, to understand that when you sit at that table, you sit in rest. You mm -hmm. relax, you express, you sit, you trust, which is an acronym for rest. That's just how he speaks to me. And um, as I accepted the scroll into my spirit, um, he showed me that the chair has my name on it. And that the seat is actually my scroll, if that makes sense. <laughs> and when I'm seated at the table, that's when I truly express um, my identity. Yeah. Um, but I have to speak from, from rest. So that's, that's good stuff, Tina. That's good stuff. Anybody else want to share regarding scroll? Can I just add to mine as well? Shaw, when you said put it inside yourself, I, I first of all started laughing because I thought I'm, I'm not sure how this is going to fit. But I expanded my spirit and put it inside of me. And I literally stepped outside of myself to look back at myself. And it looked like earth had been placed inside my spirit. And that was how big I had become. And yet, I was even bigger looking at the bigness of my expanded spirit, which is a true indication of we don't know how big we are. We don't know the mm. awesomeness mm. of who we are. Mm. Okay, you. I'm going to share. You got a minute? Go for it. My scroll was a rolled up very long Persian rug. It wasn't a historic scroll. It didn't have light on it. It had the most incredible patterns I've ever seen. It was intricately woven with the most beautiful purple and royal colors I've ever seen. It didn't start and it didn't stop. It was Jesus took it, it was under his arm, like think about a Moroccan Turkish um, carpet seller. With a little face on his head. And he took it under his arm. He said, come, unfurl this with me because I want to show you the world. I want to show you the world. And he took it. And he unfurled it. And it ran for thousands of kilometers. And I got taken to the places it ran into. The first was Penn Dining Street in the UK. The government house. The second one was Washington. Capitol Hill, the White House, the, the big house, what do you call it, Capitol Hill, right? And then it ran and it ran, and it ran into a number of government offices with big red telephones and big, big books of mandates and legislation and principles, precepts, and oracles all being written on these books in these tables in these government halls. And then it eventually ran, and I was in an African village with about a million little African kids. And he said, would you like to know the treasure that I am going to give you? I'm not giving you a word. I'm giving you treasure hidden in secret dark places, treasures stored up that you may know that I'm the one that called you. It's the lives of the lost. That's my treasure. And the word is renaissance. It's a whole new world. There you go. Sure. That is awesome, Aileen. Okay. Anybody else? Otherwise, I'm going to move over to storehouse. All right, 
So let's go further. You can, if you want to close your eyes or not. Now that that scroll has been activated in your spirit. Um, I know the first time I walked into my scroll was like a hologram. But the idea is the scroll has been activated in your spirit. So I want you to just see yourself being taken out of the realm of the council. And you are seeing maybe galaxy, however you want to picture it. But I want you to see yourself your throne and a storehouse, however you want to picture that, is situated above you. Now, currently the storehouse is separate from you and your throne. But God wants that throne and you, because you and the throne are actually one. And God wants that storehouse that has been released with your scroll to become one with you. Because when the sons of God get the revelation that everything that they have and is available to them is in them, we will start to operate on another level. So, however... You want to picture the storehouse, but the door is closed, all right? I want you to see an angel has been assigned with that storehouse that has been assigned to you. And that angel is the gatekeeper of your storehouse. In that storehouse is everything that has to facilitate the fulfillment of the scroll that has been activated within you right now. That angel holds the key. He is only facilitating. You are the one that operates that storehouse. You are the one that speaks and facilitates what comes out from that storehouse. I want you to go to that angel and he's going to, he extends his arm out and he puts that key within your hand. You take that key and you go to your storehouse and you open that door. Now I just want to, just beforehand, before you open the door, just don't picture your storehouse as a three by three meter. You know, like come on, you've got to realize your storehouse is a galaxy. You know, so let's just break open the paradigms here and realize what you're dealing with. You're not dealing with the Zozo shed. You take that key and you unlock probably one of the most magnificent gates, apart from the throne room, that you know that you are opening that gate. And you see that magnificent gate open. Now, I want you to see, as mystical as it can be, that that storehouse is moving. You move towards the storehouse, and that storehouse is moving towards you, and it's becoming one with you. You've got to get this revelation that the storehouse and you are one. When you're going to facilitate and take from the storehouses because that thing has now been grafted and opened and released with your scroll into your spirit and is one with you. Okay? That's why sons of God don't go and beg God for healing or beg him to come through. Because God is saying you need to operate like me. And that's the purpose of the storehouse is from that storehouse, you are going to release and facilitate the fulfillment of that scroll that has been activated now in your spirit. So I want you to take a moment and just go through the experience of the activation 
of the door that was opened, the storeroom that becomes one with you, and ask your angel to show you something unique in that storehouse. Because what is unique in that storehouse is something critically aligned with what is in your scroll that God might not have shown you yet. So think far beyond money because you need to know we're going into a time and a dimension where the sons of God are going to operate above money. Okay. I'll give you a couple of minutes just to engage with that. And you, of course, you are welcome. If you want to share, you can go ahead with it. Oh. Hi. I can go it's for it. Ruth. Hi, it's Ruth Redeem on Facebook. Hello, Ruth. <laughs> Hi, I love your smile. It makes me feel so special. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good to meet you face to face. May I share? Yes, please go ahead. Okay. Hello from Canada, everybody. Um, okay. So, let me see, there are so many details. Uh, I uh, observed that the scroll was inside me. It was a vast place. And just to be transparent and really silly for a quick moment, 
this is what I saw before you led us to be aware of that, that it really should be in us and, and that merging of oneness is so key. So then that happened before you said that. And I thought, oh my gosh, here he is saying that we, you know, <laughs> to do this. And, and I hadn't heard you say that yet. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, maybe this isn't right. <laughs> But then you spoke it out and I'm like, all right, I'm on track. Thank you, Lord. So it was inside me. um, And there was just a a huge, deep, dark vastness, which I had complete peace with. And then you led us to um, ask the angel if there was something there. And there was. And it was a pair of tap shoes. So I understood that those tap shoes made a sound. And the fact that there were shoes was because that sound needed to be walked out on the earth. So I stood there pondering this and then it dawned on me that I really should put them on. So I asked if that was the right thing to do. And apparently what happened next was they ended up inside my chest cavity. And once they ended up in my chest cavity, they began to grow and expand and take residence. Once they began to expand and take residence, it became, I became aware that the actual tap shoes was a squirrel. <laughs> so I just acknowledged that they were a scroll and decided to be absolutely okay with that. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> And of course, I spent time just being utterly grateful. <clears throat> so thank you for leading us today. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I just, what was pretty significant for me as I was engaging my storeroom is that I Uh, I saw that the key that the angel gave to me became my mouth. And my mouth and the key were one. They were not separate anymore. Now, that was interesting. If you think the the middle um, uh, Hebrew letter for scroll is pay, which is mouth. So how awesome is that, that the key is in the middle of the scroll? And, uh, and that's the, the key is your mouth. So once you've engaged your storehouse and that key and it's become part of you, there's an authority that I felt that has been released within me now that when I speak, I am executing the key to my storehouse into the situation, whatever um, I need to engage with or, or release or whatever. And, um, and that was pretty special for me, you know, so I'm a little bit lost in to see what God is still trying to show me. But that, the, the engagement of the key and what it is and what it is now was pretty significant for me. Michelle, <clears throat> my um, experience was ever since I took the scroll and put it in my spirit. It was not a bad heaviness, but it's like a good burden, a good, like a big responsibility type of, when I pushed the scroll in, I couldn't get it in. And I saw Jesus' hand on the scroll on the other side because he was helping me push it in. And as he pushed it in, it just dissolved. But it was like a fullness, an absolute overflow of fullness and I could feel it sitting still now. I was high on breath. And again, also before you explained about the gates, I saw myself taking the, the key 
but I knew I had to turn around and step into the door because there was an outframe of my impression on that door. So I had to step into it. It can't open without my impression. <clears throat> and as I stepped in, the key was placed within sight of that exactly where I put the scroll in. And as I unlocked it, I heard the, the ratchets, everything, just a big clunk opening. And as it opened, it's like a, it's almost like if you watch space movies and there's a hole in the, in the capsule, that, that vacuum, that air just absolutely rushed out from inside and, it, and it's, it's never going to stop. And it's just a, a, a gushing, a rushing of, of, of light just streaming out. I don't see any particular object. The only thing I got was knowledge. There's, there's a release of knowledge that is streaming out. And when you mentioned your mouth, I haven't opened my mouth then yet because I didn't have to reason to speak. But as I spoke again, it, the light diverted from, my, from inside of my cavity up through my mouth and shot out through my, so every time I close my mouth, it will keep on shooting out through my, my, um, where I push the scroll in and I can still feel this heaviness and I almost, it almost got me worried, but I just feel this absolute burden of responsibility because that book that I carried was so heavy and yeah, it, it struggled getting inside of me, but only Jesus could push it, help me push it in. That's awesome, Marcel. Thank you, thank you for sharing. Um, sure. I want to um, share. Um, when you when you said we had to um, push the scroll into our spirit, um, I I didn't see the fireworks and and all those lovely things, but I saw uh, something like um, molten lava coming out of my spirit. But it's like, I was, since then, I'm like, it feels like I'm on fire sitting here. It's like, I had to take off my jacket and everything. It's, it's just extremely hot. But then in the in the store, storehouse, um, I saw it, uh, the angel showing me a toolbox. But it's not your normal type of toolbox. It's like a toolbox slash first aid kit with everything... Um, every tool, whatever you need, it's like it's just there. So mm. it was, um, um, it's it's like a feeling that um, it's like a healing some something or in the area. Mm. I don't know. It's but it's um yeah. It's it, it was weird. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, Karin. I think there's a lot more that God wants to show you. If he shows you a toolbox, there's lots in a toolbox, you know. So keep on engaging with it. What I saw when I came to my storeroom, there was a, an angel with a very big key. He had to take it off his back like a bow or arrow that he carries, and it was encrusted with diamonds and things. And he actually had to help me to open up the door. But when I went through, it was just light and beautiful, uh, it was just beautiful on the other side, but I immediately recognized things that I saw before, like a replenishing room that I went to and under the sea in the tube with fish and things that swam around me. But I asked, but what is new then? And I saw seeds, but it was gold. Peas and beans and everything, but all the seed was gold encrusted. That's what I saw. Sure. That just tells me there's lots to come out of all those seeds, gold encrusted seeds, that's for sure. Cheryl, may I share? Yes, please I, go for it. Um, I was a little bit hesitant because I, I, I was kind of similar uh, with the roots. Um, actually, the squirrel was within inside of me. And well, he was kind of showing me um stage of different stage of my school i guess it was like a paper kind and then it kind of changed evolved to technical techie um shapes i always kind of see a lot of geometrical shape 
and and final product I, I I was seeing cube, but it was already inside of me and in center of the cube there was a bright light um, shining from there and actually when you said really um, put it inside of your spirit that's when the light intensified and it was just it it lit up bright and then um, when you let us to the storage room. Um, my angel didn't give me the key and he, she just checked my hand. So within side of my palm, I already had a key. And when I activated the door and enter in, um, it was actually like I, I was encircling around it and it was empty, but I can sense there was a substance and so whenever I was speaking what I needed, it materialized in that space. So that's, it was kind of a little bit <laughs> different. So I, I didn't share until I had other people kind of similar thing happening. That, that witnesses with my spirit, because when I went into my storehouse, there was there weren't um, obstacles or anything like that. The sense I got is that I have all the ingredients ingredients I need within the storehouse to bring forth, to co-create with, with Jesus, you know. So the one thing that stands out for me in, in this in this realm that, that that Father is releasing is that he's really elevating the sons, he's ushering them forward to say, you need to start creating with me. And that, that, is, that is the big thing. It's, it's moving away from the, the, the um, Christianity of asking God for everything. Now, of course, we, we, we see the heart's attitude in that, but but Yahweh is saying, you are seated with me in heavenly places. When In that prophecy, when I, when I looked into the, into the scroll and parts of it were written by Father and parts of it were not because they were left open for you, for me, that we play the part of creating and fulfilling the purpose of that scroll. And that is in part also what the storehouse is available for, that Father is making you one with that storehouse. And he says, I've put everything in your hands to co-create with me. I know it sounds uh, beyond and su supernatural, above and magical, but let me tell you, that is where we're going that it has been far too simplistic. Uh, I'm, I'm going to start teaching now. I'm going to have to drum back. But I just want to stir your spirit to say where we're we going with what God is releasing with these scrolls and the storehouse. It means you are occupying the position that Yahweh did in the beginning with wisdom when they started with creation. So it is huge stuff. And I want to encourage you as you go forward with engaging with this, is there's so much here that Father is wanting to show and reveal to you that, oh, it just blows my mind. I don't think actually there's words in the dictionary to describe where we're going and what we're going to be able to do. And it is going to offend a religious mind. Just deal with that. You're probably not going to be in the popularity circle of the greater uh, Christian community. That's fine. We're not trying to vie for that. We want to occupy those positions of in the now of the remnant that is going to co-create with Christ. I, I shall, can I share? Go ahead, Joe. Um, I, just, um, I didn't see my angel's face. I just saw it's a very big dude. Um, and he handed me the key, and uh, I've seen it on Sunday also, um, but it was more like a, it's not a sword, it's like more like a dagger type uh, key, very sharp point, and uh, where the normal sort of between the, the, 
this, the, the dagger and the, and the handle, which is very short, there's like the key, there's like little ribs and things. Um, and he handed it to me, but there was no door. But he sort of said, there's the door, but there was no door. So I had to put the key into a certain space. It was like a big um, landscape in front of me. But the moment I've put it into that sort of secret place, uh, I think that's why the, the, the dagger had to be very sharp. It was like <clears throat> in the matrix where like the whole, the whole vision started shaking. It's like a big invisible door that actually just opened up. And <clears throat> I, it didn't feel like I went into the storeroom. It felt like the storeroom was actually whizzing past me. It was because the, 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 the which I forgot to say, the, the, the dagger was like, uh, shimmering between gold and silver. Gold and silver, it was very shiny. It was like a living sword. And as I opened that invisible door, I just saw all these angels that stood on either side, but they were all covered in silver, but they were also huge. It was like a whole alleyway which just whizzed past me. And then right in the center of the, uh, the storeroom was like a big uh, golden sphere, like the center of, 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 it felt like the center of the, of the whole store, but it was very far in. But as you enter into that, into that sphere, it was like um, you could actually access anything. The future markets, the future uh, currencies, the future uh, way of dealing and trading and all that was, was there to, to, to have a look at. And I, and I just felt that what the Lord wants to show us that uh, the midst of the lockdown and the coronavirus and the markets uh, uh, collapsing around us, he wants to show us a new way of dealing. We're going to be much more profitable and uh, uh, successful and prosperous in this new dispensation than we ever thought is possible. Wow. That is awesome stuff. Thank you, Joe. Hi, Shaw. Hi, hi, Stephen. How are you? How are you? <clears throat> well, thanks. Um, just like to share that I can concur with you um, when you spoke about the, the creation and the abilities. Um, the scroll had a heading on it. The roll guard, it had a heading on it in, in writing, but I couldn't read it. And as much as I tried to read it, I couldn't read it. And the rest of the scroll, being large, as we went into the scroll and of them floating on, floating on clouds. Um, but in the room where the scroll was, the, um, the counter, there's a lot of energy. There's, there's, the angels are all sorts of different sizes. You know, some of the sizes of that little Tinkerbell fairy that, that, that fly around. Um, Incredible amount of energy, but no requirement to create or need to produce energy. The energy was infinite. You didn't have to stop because you were getting hungry or go and get a drink of water. Whatever. It, it, yeah. it was just continuous. Um, I also found that in, in the storeroom, the same thing. There was the, the, It was continuously overflowing, but it was not having to be replenished. Yeah. If that makes sense for you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah thank you, Stephen. See, the storehouse is, is operating completely in a new supernatural realm. There's something that is being opened and revealed through, through that storehouse so that the sons of God can operate from a level that they've never operated before. So it's going to be something new for you as well. And, um, and that's why, um, before the next person speaks, that's why an angel has been assigned to that storehouse. Learn to engage with that angel of that storehouse because that angel carries the mandate of that storehouse. Get over the thing of whether you can command an angel or not. You can, you're a son, but you're not commanding the angel. You are engaging its mantle and mandate. And that angel was assigned with that storehouse for the specific reason for you to engage it 
to facilitate the manifestation and the release from that storehouse. So don't ignore the angel that came with the storehouse. And talk to the angel. Don't let anybody tell you you can't talk to angels. Really? <laughs> so. That's me. I just want to ask quickly. I got like, quite a lot. Um, how does the Lord reveal it to you eventually? Is it like when you have a dream and then like, oh, what's the significance of gold? Oh, what's the significance of this? You know? How do I know of what it means? Uh, are you talking about the things that you now saw in your scroll? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, it, it is something that you're going to ask the Lord about, but it's also something you can go and look in a book. You can go just look in a book, what's the significance of gold? And God can show, reveal something to you like through that. Um, mm -hmm. So there are many ways and means of understanding what God has shown you, etc., you know. So don't put yourself in a box and don't, you know, sometimes we can be hyper spiritual unless we like we're in the heavenlies and I saw this tunnel come down and it all like, you know, I mean, like get over yourself, you know, let's just put our feet on the ground here. There are many ways God can show you things, you know, so don't put that out of the scope, you know, we can, you know, if, if you don't hear a direct voice of God, you know, how many people have heard the direct voice of God? I mean, like, there are many things through which God speaks. So don't put God in a box as the way to He reveals things for you. Okay. So absolutely. And what God shows you, it's a journey. You know, it's, it's once again, God's going to show you something that is relevant for now. That's why intimacy with, with the scroll and, and the storehouse is so important. Because remember, in that prophecy, it was that you will engage a chamber of God's heart that is unique to you. If you don't engage that chamber, no one's going to. So it's like God has got this peace in his heart, and he says, Sharon, this is yours, and it's only for your engagement, and I've kept it for you. So, And that is you engaging and God showing and revealing that part of his heart, among other things, you know. So it's intimacy and relationship is, is, of course, always key. And the Hebrew letters, people, if you don't know the Hebrew letters, get to know the Hebrew letters. Because it's not a language. Those are spirit beings. They reveal so much to you about the scrolls and what God is busy doing. Someone said to me, aren't you worshipping the letters and stuff like that? You know, let's just roll back and remember that Jesus is the Word. The Word is Jesus. So when you look at Yeshua, you see Hebrew letters morphing and emanating in and through Him. You start to look at Jesus in a completely different way. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I want to draw to a point. Is there anybody else that would like to say something? I'd like to say uh, something. Sure, Jens. Um, okay. Uh, when I was going to the storehouse, um, I saw a cherub there. Um, I mean, specifically, just... just um, and it, as you said, um, sometimes these things are a bit vision-like. Um, uh, but the angel there, um, uh, when when I went, when I wanted to go in, um, he made it very clear to me that um, I'm not going in with the old Adamic nature um, in the way that um, in, in 1 Corinthians um, 15 around 48 around um, where Paul talks about um, that um, we bear the image of um, Adam um, but now let us bear the image of Jesus, the heavenly, 
Um, but unless that happens, you're not going in into the story. Um, and also that that um, was the key for me. Um, who I am is the key. Yes. Yeah, you're right. Awesome. Uh, Alf, did you want to say something? I saw your light go on. Oh, yes, Sean. I did. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Awesome. Um, yeah, I um, just want to share that. Uh, when I um, opened my scroll, um, I just saw the word healing on there. And uh, and then when, when uh, you said to put it in your spirit, and I did that, as all of a sudden, all these rays of light started just shooting out from me from everywhere, in all directions. And um, and then um, when, when, after that, it was I, my old, looked like my old body just stopped, started just one light body. You can't really see the uh, see, see the silhouette. Basically, it's just this light. You can see the body, the silhouette, but you can't see anything else. It's just light. And then, as we walked into the um, to the warehouse, I was um, standing there, and I thought, and I was asking my um, my angel to show me something significant to him, because you know, I'm not even going to start explaining what I saw the warehouse to look like. But um, and I, I, there's these big white wings opened up and folded from my back and it's just like it would be open and um there was the sword this with this this gold handle on this is that the handle was gold and the uh, blade of it was was looked, looked like it was diamond the whole the whole blade this huge sword and then right next to that was this big shield that that you know they were standing in side to side next to each other and the, the shield with these rubies and stones and, and stuff in it and um, which is quite significant that the last time I saw uh, basically the last time I saw myself like that was years ago three four years ago and um, to which and that was it's quite significant to me I thought I'd like to share that yeah oh, that's amazing thank you all Oh, thank you, Shaw. May I ask a quick question? Yes, Ruth. Great, thanks. Is it possible to see more than one angelic being associated or assigned to your warehouse? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So they can, I mean, they can be hordes, you know, so I merely identified an angel that carry the key with the with the storehouse, but there can be a lot more that's facilitating and have functions regarding your storehouse. And there can be um, angelic beings assigned to something specific that you are dispersing from the storehouse, you know, so absolutely. Okay, that tells me I have a lot more to discern. Thank you. Alrighty, last call. Is there anybody else with that would still like to share? Can I share, Shaw? Yes, go for it, Shane. Um, I saw a lot of things, but um, one thing, you know, once inside the storehouse, um, it was like this in, uh, huge waterfall. The only thing I could compare it to was like the Victoria Falls. Um, but it was going through me. And it was the immensity of this, the size of this thing. And it was full of colors. And then another thing I saw was quite funny, is, is I saw a, a gun, a handgun. And, uh, but I was looking at the mechanism and how it worked and all the, in, the insides of it. And um, so I thought, what on earth am I looking at a gun for? And I realized, you know, God has a lot of weapons. <laughs> So it was quite funny, yeah. It was just a couple of things that I saw amongst other stuff. Yes, awesome. You know, there's definitely in in storehouse. There's always artillery. 
if you think of a temple and the storehouses attached to the temple, there's always the plunder from the enemy that's in storehouses, and there's always artillery in the storehouses as well. So it's, um, it's significant that you saw that. I'm, of course, a guns person. Yeah, I always find guns in my storehouses. <laughs> Oh, I actually love guns. <laughs> it's quite funny. <laughs> All righty then. Anybody else? Yeah, can I just say something? It's Beulah speaking. Hello, Beulah. You can go. Um, I just want to tell, um, when I went, I entered the storeroom, I saw a shop light and I just felt that Yahweh was saying it's like, the healing that's in a miraculous way that's going to take place um, like we've never seen before. And the next moment I saw a wheel running around me all over where I'm walking and I was also asking what he wants to tell me about a wheel and he showed me, I, I experienced about uh, businesses, businesses that's going to be just going to, it's like expansion of businesses like never before, but in a, in a realm that never exists before. Um, and, and then at the next moment I saw a hole and I, I didn't know what's the hole. And I, and I went to the hole and uh, as I went into the hole, it's like a stream, but it's, it was gold. And, 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 and I also asked Gabby, what, what do you want to tell me about this stream that's running there? Because it's in the storeroom. And, they, and, and he said, no, it's, it's the gold. It's not just gold. It's my treasures that are going to be revealed to my, my sons. Um, mm. But it's not going to be on earth. It's under, if in, in the, like in the oceans, deeper than the deepest you can see. I don't know. That's what I was seeing. seeing. Mm. Oh, that is amazing. Um, hello. Hello. Yeah. My key was a lightning bolt. Best key I have ever received. I wouldn't it was quite cool. That. Anything less. I know. <laughs> it was a lightning bolt and it reminded me of Justin Paul Abraham's word to me when he was here in November last year. Uh, year before, I think. Help yeah, me out. Is it a year ago? Year before. And when he signed his, the book, I asked him to sign the book, Beyond Human. And he drew... I'd forgotten about it. It's on the back page. Drew a huge lightning bolt and said, it's the lightning bolts of God, which is the love of the Father, which is the power to open up things as yet unseen. Yes. I like it. Okay. Absolutely. Beautiful. And that, and that comes back again to the intimacy thing. If we're going to lack the intimacy, we're going to struggle with the scroll in the storehouse. Because God, if you think of what's going on globally, it's God has pushed people back into the house, back into bed, back into the temple, so that we can start looking back at our relationship and our intimacy with him, because from there, lots is going to be birthed. Righty. Okay, I want you to close your eyes. <clears throat> I want you to see, it's just a prophetic action, however you want to see it. But you just see Jesus take his hand, and you see the scar on his hand. I want you to see the blood on his hand. And he just puts it on your chest, on your spirit. And he seals that which he has shown you into your spirit it's as, he, as if he locks it up cannot escape again it's, it is done telestai Haley's favorite word sealed into your spirit I want you to visualize that you and the storehouse are no longer separate you are one all right, the key is one in you, as you are one with a scroll 
that has been implanted in your spirit. I want you to see you busy moving backwards. You see the throne room of God moving further away. You see the council realm moving further away. And I just want you to be aware of, of the warmth of Jesus that is with you and in you. Even though he's taken your hand, he's in you. You are in him. You are one with him. As you just move back, And I want you just to see how you come back through the cross. The gatekeepers before and after the cross. You've engaged the rounds through the proper protocols. Jesus is the gate. And you are back here. So yes, you are still there. But I want you to see that your awareness is now here in the earthly realm. I want you to prophetically, I want you to picture your household. If it's just you, then it's just you. That's cool. I want you to picture, if you're a father, you picture your wife, your children, or mother and picture a husband and children. If it's mother and children, you picture your children. But I want you to picture your family because this scroll was given for the household and it was planted in you. I want you to see you open up your spirit and every one of your immediate family, your household family, not woman, auntie and and whoever else in Antarctica and Kazakhstan, your household, you see them move into your spirit. You see them move into and they become one with that scroll. They become one with that storehouse. I want you to see that mantle of the scroll is being rolled around your household and that it's sealed with the blood of Jesus, that it is done. I want you to see your household, your family is being elevated and is being installed into a new realm, into a new dimension. A new sound, a new frequency is being released within your household. See your children's spirit opening up or your spouse's spirit opening up and receiving prophetically what has been released in and through you. And that it is sealed by the blood of Jesus. Father, I just extend my hand over every person that is connected via Zoom. We are connected in spirit, Lord. And I speak the blessing of the Lord over them. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. May the Lord give you peace. And I pray that your spiritual eyes, ears, your nose, your mouth will engage the new realm that has been released through the scroll to engage the storehouse and everything else that goes with it to co-create in Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. You guys are most marvelous. I love you big time. And thank you for taking out the time to connect with us um, this evening. And um, yeah, so I'll, I'll still be online if you want to chat a bit or if you've got some questions. But otherwise, have a, a lovely weekend. Um, if you are connecting and you haven't subscribe to throneroommystic.com. You're welcome to do so. I send a blog out every Tuesday. Um, the whole purpose of Throne Room Mystic is to activate 
your supernatural life. And, um, and I try to cover stuff that might not necessarily be covered in church. So you're welcome to engage with that if you'd like to. And um, I will be releasing the next teaching on the seven pillars of wisdom on Sunday as well. So it will be the third one now. Otherwise, have a most marvelous week. And we, we, we're connecting every Wednesday evening. So if you've registered and you've got... You've given me your email address and you've received it um, via email. You don't have to send it again when I put the ad on Facebook. So you are on the list. And if you want to go off the list, there's an unsubscribe thing at the bottom of the email. So I won't be hurt or feel offended or anything out like there. I might just send you spam mail after that. But, you know, <laughs> but, you, know you are free to come and go as you like. There's no obligations whatsoever. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sean. Thank you. 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 <laughs> Can I give you my song for the evening? Yes, Come on. Right. Okay, when I went into the storeroom with the lightning bolt, I got a gold little bell that you see at a five-star hotel. Oh, I wrapped there. I got a gold bell that you see at a five-star hotel. You know when you arrive at reception and you ring the little bell? Yeah. And the little porter comes running out and the guy says, Madam, I've been waiting for you. Your reservation is here. How can I help you? And you know what the father said? You can ring my bell. <laughs> ring my bell. My bell. Ring it. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to tell you that. Why? <laughs> it's because people are too scared to approach the father. And he's saying, my golden bell is I come and ring my bell. Bam. Okay, good night, everybody. <laughs> 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 hey Walter, it's lucky to see you. I missed you. <laughs> hey, we are yeah, eh? Yeah, yeah. Oh fantastic. How's lockdown been? That's been good. Been good. Working. Working. Working from home. Uh, working, learning. Yeah. Fantastic. I, I'm sure Daniela keeps you very busy, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hiding from the camera. <laughs> yeah. She hasn't put her lips on lipstick. Neither did I. I'm in mascara, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <didn't>. No. <laughs> no. Okay, I've shown you off. Nice, good place. Thanks, Stephen. Keep well. Good to see you. Bye bye. 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 Yeah, I am. <laughs> I just decided to kick back and observe your family, your spiritual family. <laughs> I am. Um, I feel some kind of a connection to your church, and yet I'm like another nation. <laughs> That's pretty incredible, eh? <laughs> and wow. so I, I stayed on just to observe your family, thinking, well, if this is a connection that I'm observing, which I still have to, you know, press into to that, yes. then those people I'm staring at are my family too. <laughs> That's right, eh? So I've been quietly staring and gawking at all of you. <laughs> <laughs>
and going, there's my sister in the black sweater, and there's my brother in the pink t-shirt, and there's that other brother of mine with the beard and headphones. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and as I just, you know, move slowly through these perceptions, that's how I allow the spirit to speak. I just approach you all like a dove. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. It was lucky to have you with us, Ruth. Looking Thank forward you. to a long relationship. Amen. Amen. That um, young woman who's very lively, animated, and full of vigor. Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> <laughs> she is my spiritual sister, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love her too, but she really, she she lights up the room wherever she goes, you know, so, I mean, I, you, you'll see the Jens there with the beard and the, and the headphones, you know, him and Haley have got quite a close friendship, etc. And uh, 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 so, yeah, when she, she comes to our services, you know, she lives, yeah, but, right. um, you know, uh, I love her a lot, and she's got fire, you know. Okay, wow. Uh, I I found it interesting as I was observing her as well. Um, Yeah, I I just had a lot of joy, a lot of delight. There's a lot of intensity in her. She's a beautiful little whirlwind. And um, as in the midst of observing her, I I was overcome by speaking in tongues. Wow. And, And I thought to myself, you know, that's never happened before. You know, and and it, it dawned on me 